Hey up everybody and welcome to this Unit 1 Crime and Punishment video blog. This is all you need to know to be successful on the Crime and Punishment exam on the 1st of June this year. The first top tip is to make sure that you are answering all the right questions. Everybody on a Crime and Punishment exam has to answer question 1, question 2 and question 3. Then you have a choice of doing question 4 or 5 and then you have a choice of doing question 6 or 7. Look at the guide here and to see how long you should be spending on each question. Timing is really, really important for this exam. So good chronological understanding is really important on the crime and punishment exam. You'll need to know examples of crimes, law enforcement and punishments for each of the different time periods. The six different time periods are the Romans, 50 to circa 450. The C there stands for circa, which means around or approximately. Then there's the Anglo-Saxons from around about the year 500 to 1066. Next comes the Middle Ages or medieval times. And then it's the early modern period, which is the time of the Tudors and the Stuarts. After that comes the era of the Industrial Revolution, when Britain really modernised and all those big cities uh, were created. And then lastly, we've got the modern era, the 20th and 21st centuries. So it's really important to know the time periods. And remember, to work out what century an event happened in, you need to take the first two numbers and then add one. Or if it's just a three-digit number, just take the first number and add one. So for example, the year 750 is in the 8th century, whereas the year 1066 happened in the 11th century. Meanwhile, the year 1767 would have happened in the 18th century, and the year 1829 was in the 19th century. 1829, of course, being the year that Robert Peel created the police. So one of the, another top tip is to make sure you read the questions properly. Use the BUSY acronym to help you to do this. Firstly, when you see an exam question, you should box the command words. Things like, to what extent, or do you agree, or what can you learn from the source. The command words are the words that tell you what you need to do in the exam question. Next, you need to underline the key words, phrases, or dates in the question. Pay particular attention to the time periods of the question, and make sure you stay within the correct time parameters. You may want to then scribble a plan, certainly for the longer essay questions, the 12 markers and the 16 mark essay questions. And only then are you ready to go. Remember, reading exam questions properly is a vital element of any exam success. So let's go through the different types of questions on the crime and punishment exam. The first question, question one, is worth eight marks and you should spend around about 12 minutes for this question. To find out how long to spend on each question, you want to times the number of marks by one and a half. That will tell you how many minutes to spend. So question one will always give you two different historical sources. And you'll need to make an inference about change, what changes have happened between the two sources. So on this example, we can see two sources which tell us about law enforcement. Source A, about law enforcement in the Middle Ages, talking about the hue and cry and the tithings. Where source B shows us a picture of a police constable around the year 1850. So in this question, you need to make an inference about change. So you need to think about what you can infer about what's changed between the two different sources. You also need to judge how much change there has been. Has there been a lot of change or maybe only a small amount of change? You need to refer to the sources by quoting them, making sure that you keep your quotes short and snappy but you also must use detailed own knowledge to help you to explain the change. So, for example, some own knowledge about the creation of the police in 1829 by Robert Peel would be a good bit of own knowledge to explain the changes in methods of enforcing the law between the Middle Ages and the 19th century. Question two is worth six marks and you should spend nine minutes on this question. This question is really testing your knowledge of the course. So you'll be given two different time periods, perhaps, or two different individuals or two key events. And you just choose one of the boxes. So you've got an element of choice within question two. So for the example that you see here, 
you would choose one of the uh, different time periods, Romans or Anglo-Saxon, and you would just describe what punishments were like during that period. The key to this question is using detailed own knowledge to support your points and try if you can, if it's a key event or individual, to put the event or individual into its historical context. That means what happens before and after. So, for example, if you were writing about prison reformer John Howard from the 18th century, you might uh, talk about how he influenced other prison reformers such as Elizabeth Fry. So we come on to question three which is worth eight marks, and you should spend 12 minutes on this question. For question three, you have to explain how useful an historical source or document or picture is to an historian who is investigating some aspect of history. There's two things that you need to look out for for this question. Firstly, you need to evaluate how useful the NOP of the source is. Now, the NOP stands for Nature, Origin and Purpose. Nature means what type of source it is, origin, who wrote it and when, and purpose, why the source has been written. So you need to say something about the knob of the source and whether it's useful. For example, you might come to the conclusion that a source is biased and therefore it could be less useful. Or you might come to the conclusion that if the nature of the source is a photo, it might be less useful because it doesn't give us the whole picture of what happened. Next, you need to analyse the content of the source. Now, that means what information does the source actually give us. So you might say that a source is useful because it tells us a lot of information. You may quote from the source. But for this question, you also need to use your detailed own knowledge. So you need to think about what information is perhaps not written in the source that you actually know about from your own knowledge. And then you might argue that the source is less useful because it does not give us the whole story. So question three, you need to explain how useful a source is by looking at the knob of the source and its content. And you must remember to quote the source and use detailed own knowledge to support your answer. It's a tricky question, question three. So keep uh, looking at example question threes and watch this part of the uh, blog again, just so that you really know how to answer question three. So, in the next bit of the Crown Punishment exam, you'll do either question 4 or 5, or question 6 or 7. Now, both these questions involve extended writing, and these are the kinds of essay questions that you'll be given. We talk about the first part of the question as being the question stem. So, you might get a question that says, why were, or why was, for example, why was smuggling a difficult crime to stop uh, in, uh, in the past? And if you get a why question, you need to try and give at least three detailed and well-explained points. Use the uh, concept of P, point, evidence, explanation. Uh, and in your conclusion for a why question, you would want to evaluate which factor is the most important. Now, because the crime punishment exam focuses on change and continuity, you might get a question that says something like how similar or how much for example, how much change or how much did punishments change between different time periods? It's really important to give a balanced answer for this type of question. So you need to find evidence for both change and continuity. And it's really important to give as many bits of evidence as you can to back up your points and explain them and link them back to the question. Um, the more evidence that you have got, the more explanation you are going to have and the better your answer will be. Some of you need to just simply write more for this question. Uh, you will be uh, looking probably to write two, maybe three pages in your exam booklet for these essay type questions. You might get a question stem that says to what extent was or how far do you agree? And these sorts of questions you need to find evidence to agree or disagree with an opinion. So let's have a look at some examples of question four and question four. So, when you're doing question four and question five, remember to use the busy acronym to really read the question carefully and then use the uh, P uh, idea, point, evidence, explanation. So you can see here there's a question, question four, how similar were methods of law enforcement? So this would be an example, uh, a question which you'd need to give examples of change and continuity. Question five here, you can see there's a why question. So again, you need to give three detailed, uh, well-explained points uh, plus a conclusion. Here are some examples of question six or seven. Now this is a 16 mark question, so you need to write a little bit more than you would have done for question four or five. And all your spelling, punctuation and grammar marks 
come from question six or seven. So make sure that you're going to scope your work and you're going to think about writing really carefully in paragraphs. You're going to have about 25 minutes for this question. And again, you want to use the busy uh, idea to read the question carefully and use the yeah, point evidence explanation. So here you've got a couple of questions. How much did punishments change from the late Middle Ages to the end of the 19th century? Question six. So this question, you need to give examples of change uh, in punishments, but also examples of how punishments have stayed the same, finishing with a conclusion. So you'd probably have about three paragraphs for that answer. Question seven is a how far do you agree uh, question. So you'd need to have evidence to agree in a paragraph, evidence to disagree in a paragraph, and then finish with a conclusion. So it's really important to structure your essay questions carefully and have enough evidence uh, that you're going to use to back up your points, but also link back to the question. You need that analysis and evaluation to pick up the explanation marks. So let's have a look at these essay uh, questions in a bit more detail. Make sure you're going to quote the question in your answer. So we're just going to really focus on this question six, a 16 mark question. And you can see here, I've put in bold here, an example of how you can quote the question in your answer. It's great because it really shows that you're answering the question uh, precisely. So here you can see that example on the right hand side. Maybe just take a time or pause this there just to read that uh, answer so you can see how you might be able to, when you do the exam, quote the question in your answer. When you're doing these essay questions, you'll often be given bullet points to help you. Uh, and it's really important that you are using your own knowledge to add to those bullet points. So in this example question, uh, one of the things that it gives you is the idea of the bloody code. So you can see on the right hand side is an example of how you can use that information about the bloody code. But you're also going to add to that bullet point using your detailed own knowledge and then crucially the bit where it says this shows that punishments changed a lot and over time we're becoming more lenient that is a good example of your explanation and your evaluation which is really important for getting uh, good marks make sure you don't over rely on the bullet points here's some uh, advice from a recent examiner's report which shows how important it is not to just rely on the bullet points but to bring in your own knowledge and bring in other points that are not included in the bullet points so throughout the essay questions to get the best marks you want to analyze and evaluate and not just tell a story not just include your own knowledge so try and use some of these uh, key phrases this meant that this shows a change because this is an example of continuity because this is a compelling reason. You're going to want to explain your opinion. So overall, my opinion is that that is the key for getting really good marks on these essay questions. And that will also help your spelling, punctuation and grammar marks. So an example of how you could do this, if you're doing this essay, uh, once you've done the busy, you'd want to do a quick plan. Really important to get your paragraph in right on these essays. So you'd have a paragraph on change, a paragraph on continuity, and then a conclusion. So this example here is an example of evaluation. We'll just read it and, and go through it with you. One aspect of punishments that stayed the same between the late Middle Ages and the end of the 19th century see how the quote and the question and the answer there was that punishments were harsh in the middle ages punishments were physical and harsh to deter crime this was still true even in the late 19th century where prisons had corporal punishment corporal punishment is like physical punishment and prisoners had to do hard labor and could be kept in silence or in isolation due to the separate system so that's what we mean by analysis and evaluation is taking the knowledge that you've got but using that knowledge to construct some kind of historical argument, some kind of historical analysis. That's what will make the difference in your marks and hopefully get you that grade that you want. So final piece of advice is around timing. You've got one and a half minutes for every mark. So leave yourself enough time, particularly for the 16 mark question. So question one, you're going to spend 12 minutes on that. Question two, nine minutes. Question three, 12 minutes again. That's an eight mark question. Question four or five, uh, that's the 12 mark essay, 18 minutes. Question six or seven, about 24, 25 minutes. Don't worry if you don't feel like you uh, fill in all the space in your exam booklet. They do that deliberately just to make sure there's always enough space for candidates. So don't let that phase you. Make sure that you're timing yourself properly.
So all that remains to be said is good luck. Keep revising to climb that mountain. Uh, keep watching this video so that you know how to answer the questions and keep asking your history teachers if anything's not clear or you need any extra help. Good luck for June the 1st, that's the first history exam, Unit 1, Crime and Punishment. Thank you very much for watching, thank you very much for listening. Bye bye!